Well, this time last year, the LA Rams were definitely the pitcher to compete at least for a playoff spot in the NFC. But we all know what happened. The Rams adding Matthew Stafford along with a few other key vets in Von Miller. Odell Beckham Jr. changed everything with LA winning that Lombardi out in Cali and SoFi. And you see it, Aaron Donald getting a ring on that finger, heading there to LA there. So taking a look at their chances this time around and where they sit when you talk about the odds to win Super Bowl this upcoming season. Josh Allen, the Bills, coming in the best odds there for this year's game. Plus 700, you got the Bucks and Tom Brady running it back, fooling us all. He's not retiring at plus 800. The Chiefs, Packers, and then you find the defending champs there at 12 to 1 to maybe make it back to back. Lombardi's heading out west. All right, time to welcome in senior NFL writer Jason Lockett for to break down his thoughts on how the NFL postseason picture might look down the road. And this is based off your article on CBSSports.com, JLC. And we'll get to the NFC in a second, but I want you to give me your AFC division champs. Yeah, it, it, it may be a little uh, chalky than, than some might like, especially if you're trying to get uh, ultimate value uh, with your futures bets. But, I mean, we'll start with the Bills, the odds on favorites to win the Super Bowl. I don't have a whole lot of uh, things to quibble about with their roster. I, I, I think they are on paper right now in mid-May or early to mid-May, the best team in football. They've got to go out and prove it, but they're also in a division that I think will allow them to flex their muscles because I'm not buying anybody else in that division uh, as being a, a true contender. The Bengals are the best roster in the AFC North. They're now playoff tested. Uh, they're only getting better with so much young talent. I just think they have the fewest questions asked about them. I love how they focus their free agency on the offensive line and then the draft on defense. The Colts, to me, Matt Ryan is an upgrade at quarterback. The Titans are rebuilding without telling you they're rebuilding. Matt uh, uh, Ryan Tannehill can now feel sort of uh, the clock ticking on his football mortality in Tennessee. They traded one of their best players. I, I think the Colts are the best team in that division. They can run the ball, play defense, decent quarterback. And the Chiefs, the West is going to be brutal. Um, there's no two ways about it. I'll be fascinated to see these divisional matchups when the schedule comes out tomorrow because that's going to matter in that division, who plays who when, maybe more than any other. I know, no cheetah. I know, no honey badger. Uh, I still like the Chiefs to win that division. All right, that schedule coming out Thursday. We'll see how that pans out there. How about your AFC wild card? A little shakeup for some of those teams there. Yeah, I guess there is a little one. Look, I, I, I believe Russell Wilson has proven he can put you in the playoff equation if he's healthy every year. I think the supporting cast in Denver is good enough that Russell Wilson um, gets them in as a wild card. Justin Herbert, what they've done to, to build that offensive line, to keep, that, uh, to, to keep the core around him in the passing game and add to it. Some of the moves they've made on defense, I'd like to see them continue to address their front seven. There's some good free agents out there. Uh, but I think Brandon Staley in year two will figure some things out. And the Ravens had terrible injury luck last year. I can't imagine um, that not regressing to the mean a little bit. Lamar Jackson's going to be back. They're going to run the ball uh, as well as they ever have. And I think that can carry them into the playoffs. I don't think it can carry them to a Lombardi trophy. Are right, the young guns here, Justin Herbert and Lamar Jackson. We've seen them in that picture before. But now Russ cooking in Denver. So we'll see how that pans out in that wild card picture. NFC division champs, you got two squads they are taking over their division crowns here out of the four. Yeah, I mean, I guess a couple of these might be seen as mild upsets, and, and I do like the value you could get in, in placing a tiny wager on them to win the division. Uh, the Eagles, I mean, I, I love the offseason. They could play defense a year ago. Um, they can play defense even better now that they've addressed their spine. D-tackle, linebacker, I think they're going to still add a safety via trade here at some point in time. Uh, Jalen Hurts, what they can do in the run game, the rest of that division, I'm not buying. I think plus 250 is good value. The Vikings as well. I just don't think this is going to be another magic carpet ride for the Packers. And I think they're getting a little long in the tooth in some spots. I think they were a little too cute about how much receivers matter. Uh, I worry about the fall off defensively from what they were a couple years ago. And then you've got the two chalky teams there, uh, the Bucks, the Rams. The, we know what they're capable of doing in the playoffs. We've seen it with our own eyes the last couple of years. All right, Bucks and Rams, the easy picks there. Eagles and Vikings, maybe we'll see how that pans out there this offseason leading into the full season, into the postseason. What about your wild card pitcher in the NFC? 
Well, there's a couple teams that I think kind of stand out from the pack. I just mentioned one, the Green Bay Packers. While I don't think they're going to be this juggernaut that wins 13, 14 games anymore, uh, and I do think they'll stumble, it's still Aaron Rodgers. It's still a playoff pedigree. They'll get in. I like the Saints. Um, I like the Saints a lot. I think the Saints will push Tampa for that division title, um, especially if Jameis is back and Jameis is ready to play week one, and that is the expectation. The Cardinals, I'm going by default here. I went back and forth between them, the 49ers, um, I, I, and the Cowboys I considered. I just don't know about Trey Lance. I don't know enough there, and I don't really buy Dallas as an ascending ball club. So I leaned into the notion that Cliff Kingsbury and Kyler Murray are what they are. They can get you nine wins. They can keep you in the equation. They'll hit some real high notes. They'll hit a lot of flat notes. But there's probably enough talent to get into an expanded playoff field. I just don't fancy them contenders. All right, JLC, we got about 10 seconds here. Who just missed a list for you when you put this all together here? Yeah, one other team is the Miami Dolphins. Um, I don't love that division, but I do think Miami is going to be much better this year than last year, and if you told me they were in the playoffs, I wouldn't be shocked. All right, Mike Daniels taking over there, too, as well. Still the QB1 for the Dolphins. All right, as always, Jason Lockett for tapping in on everything NFL. Don't forget the Pick 6 podcast. The fellas always tapping in. Will Brinson, John Breach discussing the latest happenings and speculations around the league. First, they focus on the Seahawks quarterback situation. If they're buying Pete Carroll's comments, next they discuss another QB situation in the NFC West with Jimmy G still facing uncertainty in his future in San Francisco. Just download and give the guys a follow. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.